as usual, to well, start off by looking somewhat backwards, look at well, what, how the markets have performed to bring you up to speed of what exactly the markets are saying. We will start off with a quick look at the currency pairs, the Kenya shilling versus the pound sterling, the dollar, and of course the euro. And the dollar pegged at 106.2 buying and 100.82 selling. That of course being the buying and selling levels respectively, while the pound is pegged at 132 flat, 190. While others include, of course, the euro, which is pegged at 117.14, 117.41. That, of course, are the buying and selling levels respectively. The NSE itself turnover for the previous trading session 498 million shares there. Well, worth of shares bought and sold. Shares traded some 13.9 million uh, shares. NSC 20 share index picked up 3,301.70. They're trending upwards, recovering some of the lost ground in previous trading sessions. While bond turnover was 2.2 billion shillings. Well, let's take a quick look at the bulls and the bears of that trading session. These were the most active stocks of the day, Safaricom, KCB, Equity Bank, Earth River Mining, Cement, Safaricom, 5.41 million shares there changing hands, KCB, 4.91 million shares, Equity Bank, 1.14 million shares, while Earth River Mining, Cement moved 480,000 shares. While the winning stocks of the day, Earth River Mining, Cement, Samia Africa, East Africa Cables, and the Flame Tree Group. Earth River Mining trending upward 9.59% to 4 shilling flat, while Samia was up 9.09% .09 to 2 shillings and 40 cents, while East Africa Cables was up 8.97% to 4 shillings 25 cents, while the Flame Tree Group uh, was up 8.57% to 3 shillings and 80 cents. Well, what were the bulls, or what, what were the bears of that trading session? These are the losing stocks of the day. Well, we start off with a quick look at Portland, down 9.33% to 17 shillings and 50 cents. Scan Group shedding 5.76% to 15 shillings 55 cents. Well, Kenya Orchards down 5.36%, making some very, very rare movement there to 2 shillings 65 cents, and Britam shedding 3.01% to 14 shillings and 15 cents on the day. Well, as ever, we are interactive today and we are asking you in our Twitter poll question, do you think unlocking new markets for mining companies in Kenya will enable, well, the country have an impact in boosting its exports? Again, do you think unlocking new markets for mining companies in Kenya will have an impact in boosting exports? The hashtag is KTN Business. You can reach me directly on at Peter Wakaba or use the Twitter handle at KTN News. Of course, this question driven by the fact that Kenya's second ever extractive sector around the gemstone and mining industry is currently ongoing here in Nairobi at the Intercontinental Hotel. And that event, of course, going a long way to sensitize the public. And of course, mining sector stakeholders on just what the various opportunities out there are. Again, do you think unlocking new markets for mining companies in Kenya will have an impact in boosting exports? Well, Let's go to the news of the day now. Day two of the Association of Professional Societies in East Africa, APSE, a national profession, uh, professionals convention, kicked off this morning at the Safari Park Hotel, with various sessions being lined up for the last day of the event. In previous sessions, speakers have underscored the need to push for continued integrity right across the economy. It is our position that this process should not be politicized, but should instead be 
supported by all well-meaning Kenyans who care for this country. If we are to truly transform the affairs of this country moving forward. In this regard, this convention will be looking at finding ways through which APSEA can play a more integral role in the vetting of professionals who are seeking to join public service in a bid to continue with our mission to enhance integrity and ethics among all professionals. Well, it is a good start right there to have professional organizations actually volunteering to the ones who take the lead in driving for continued integrity. Kudos to them. Now, seven Kenyan entrepreneurs have been selected to join the Endeavor Network under Endeavor Kenya, a not-for-profit organization which supports high-impact entrepreneurs with a proposition to support them create 25,000 new jobs in the Kenyan economy over the next five years. Now, Endeavor Kenya is well known for securing the 4.8 billion shilling investment by Endeavor Catalyst, an offshoot of the Endeavor Global Initiative in local digital payment provider Celluland that is run by Ken Njeroge and Bolaji Akinboro, two entrepreneurs under its mentorship. Now, those selected in this, this current round include, well, Paul Mbogo of Eclectics International, Grant Brook of Twigger Foods, Wandia Geshuru of Vivo Activewear, and Bill Hadirango and Samuel um, Gekandi of Africa is talking. They will be endeavor entrepreneurs. So to build it, I don't know what we have in our Once we qualify these entrepreneurs, we take them to an international selection process called International Selection Panel. Here they compete with other uh, entrepreneurs from other countries, and it is this process or it's through this process that we've been able to select seven, and out of those seven, we have sent out these seven to the global international selection panel. Five of them have been selected, and these are the ones that now form the five Endeavor entrepreneurs in Kenya, whom, as you've heard, the very first one we selected, Cellulant, was able to raise $46.7 million to continue growing the business, to continue expanding the business. Through this network, I'm able to pull the lead investor and we co-invest on the back um, of the lead investor. So for example, Cellulant had TPG um, from Silicon Valley, who was the lead investor, and Endeavor um, committed $2 million to this um, fundraise round as well. So any entrepreneur who's part of the Endeavor network and is fundraising is already eligible to receive money from our venture capital fund. Again, indeed, kudos to those SMEs and individuals who have been selected and enabled there to well, be on the global stage. Now, Kenya is banking on the extractive sector to boost revenue for the country through value addition and tapping into the highly lucrative export market. Stakeholders drawn from the mining fraternity now want the government in, to aid in sourcing for markets for precious stones, as well as address delays in issuance of permits and licenses. Tuna migodi, lakini hatuna pesa. Hatuna nguvu, mali ya melala chini. Na mali ya kilala pale chini, kama amuja ya toha yata wasaidia. So tunaomba serikali yone vile ineza kutusaidia. Na pia vifave ya kazi. Kama madoza, kompresa, hizo tunahitaji. Sabu sa hile tunapiga na tindo, unamaliza hata mwezi ujafika mahali. Nakiri kama uko na kompresa, ni siku mbili ushatu wa madini una, utaeza kuyauza. On top of it, madini tumeapata, hatu na soko. Ukipata madini ukienda pale voi kuuza, unakuta wahindi ni wawili tu. Yule muhindi ananunua na madharau, ananunua ile bei anataka, sababu anajua after all hauna mahali popoto pa kupeleka ayo madini. Utaenda, tena urudi kwake. Saa itabidi, jiwe uneza kuuza ata elufu miatatu, unamuzia ishirini ama salasidi. Pale kwa madini umeweka zaidi ya pesa nyingi hata zaidi ya mia ama miambili. Umeuze ishirini. Saa unaona hakuna wakati utainuka, unaendelea kuwa chini. Well, weighty issues 
to be addressed right there. Now, Kenya is indeed hosting the second edition of the Kenya Gems and Jewelry Fair to showcase precious high-value jewelry in a bit to exhibit products that are available in the country and thus attract well, various consumers and stakeholders. Katie's Abiagina is at that fair. Let's get the latest from that end, Abi. Nairobi and uh, quite a beehive of activity here as various uh, artisans and uh, people in the mining industry just coming together to showcase some of the key products that Kenya has to offer on the local and in the international markets. Well, we are now joined by the Cabinet Administrative Secretary, that is uh, John Mosinik, who we just want to just pick his thoughts on this particular affair. Many thanks for joining us, uh, Engineer. And, uh, just talk to us about uh, the significance of this fair. OK, um, thank you very much. Uh, you know, within the mining and petroleum sector, we have various minerals in this country. And uh, the main issue challenge has been they have not really been exploited fully to the benefits of our Kenyans. And uh, within the mining act, we have the large scale, we have small scale. But the most important team is, I mean, the most important group segment is actually what you call artisanal small scale uh, miners. Yes in which what we are seeing today is part of that small team that is gem and jewelry and uh, i want to tell kenyans again that um, we have tremendous kind of potential uh, source uh, resource actually in this country and here we are represented by uh, various counties we have taita taveta we have from the Turkana county and uh, kitui samburu and the others now what it has actually is showing is um, a various kind of jewelry and uh, gemstones and uh, I was amazed that uh, and again if Kenyans could be able to really appreciate what we have in various kind of sec I mean various kind of mineral sectors actually they can be able to to see that now one of the key issue which is um, we are encouraging the team is actually to form a structured kind of um, a team or a framework in which they can be able to market because the main challenge today is they have not been able to streamline their marketing activities and they go all over the world. So I think this exhibition should be able to serve as an outlet where they can be able to market their products. And also I want to tell Kenyans also that uh, the public at large that uh, we have two facilities uh, as a ministry. We have one in Voi, Taita Taveta, which is a working kind of facilities and it should be able to replace, I mean, re re replicate in other counties. Most of this sector actually is being actually addressed, uh, are being actually operated by women. And women, I would say this is a high value kind of business segment, which they should be able to be encouraged, especially to do it. All right. Mm. And uh, before I get to the PS, uh, CS, uh, last comments. Uh, many of the miners are saying uh, issues around infrastructure in the various uh, regions where we have these resources is still very wanting. And number two, they are talking of no market linkages. They have a very high worth commodities, but they do not have the right markets. As a government, what are we doing towards ensuring we bridge the gap? Yeah, uh, I fully agree that uh, there have been kind of those kind of sentiments. Uh, but again, if you go, if you read uh, Mining Act 2016, which again has given um, recognition in some of those segments which I'd said. But I think it is true in future. What we are going to do is as soon as um, we come up with the mappings for most of the resources, mineral resources we have in the country, of course it comes with infrastructure to those areas. Now, and the main challenge, again, which I stated earlier, is the marketing linkage, which again is still wanting. And again, as a ministry, we are putting up, I mean, we're putting down a framework in which you can be able to address and make sure that uh, we should be able to establish the marketing language, especially for the upcoming young artisanals and the others. Well, of course, uh, that event, they're bringing together stakeholders from right across the world. Now, East Africa Community Cabinet Secretary Peter Munya is in Lamu as part of initiatives to assess the development of projects under LAPSET. He's giving a status update. Let's listen in to what he said just a short while ago. From the traffic uh, of uh, you know, tourists flowing in, clearly security has been restored here to normalcy and no more economic activities have resumed properly. In fact, I'm told for you now to book a flight to Lamu you may not get any space immediately because, because the airlines are back in, in full operations here in Lamu. 
and the economic activity and tourism is, is back. And we want to really have for thank the security team for this collaborative work they are doing together with the people here and the technical people who are doing the, the, the port and even the, the contractor who is doing a fantastic job. So as you have said before, uh, Lapset is really a reality. You know, people keep talking as if it's a future a thing. It is taking place. The ship, it is taking shape, you, as you can see yourself. It is a matter of time. Uh, once the road now is, the issues to do with the roads are resolved. And the pipeline, uh, building of the pipeline is also progressed. You can be sure uh, Lapset will take shape and it will bring the transformation, the socio-economic transformation that is what intended to bring to the northern part of Kenya and northern part of the coastal. Well, you may have heard of Mnazi, a local brew in the coastal region. Well, the dens selling these famous brew now risk being closed. Why? Well, Ashley Mazuri has more of those details. Mnazi, a local alcoholic drink of fermented palm tree sap, provides a source of living to many men and women whose lives and that of their families depend on the selling the drink. And now they face the risk of being wiped out after it emerged that most Mnazi vendors operate outside the stipulated working hours. The vendors are usually up and selling as early as 6 a.m. to past midnight with no restrooms in their dens, as opposed to 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. as per regulations. Shell Award Assistant Chief Nicodemus Moyele is taking the matter head on through a community meeting held at the famous Mbuziwengi drinking den in Malindi. Locals raised complaints of the poor state of operations at the area. The complaints were raised by Malindi District Cultural Association, which is at the forefront of promoting culture and public health. Wanauza munazi kuanzia saa 12 mpaka uh, amesema past midnight. The incident raised concerns and the need for construction of toilets and operating certificates from the health department. Buzi Wengi is popular for selling palm wine, which attracts hundreds of revelers every day. But it is not the first time to be targeted. Police have allegedly been frustrating Mnazi sellers in Ganze, Rabai and Kilifi, yet the local brew has not been outlawed. Ashley Mazuri, KTN News. Well, the confusion in the alcoholic beverage sector continues right there of course you can tune in later in the day for more on that story with ashley Missouri. now state officers can rest easy tonight after a court ruling reinstated their group life cover and last expense insurance cover the new development is a welcome move for thousands of officers in the civil service and uniformed services like the kenya police and prisons now, sitting at the High Court in Nairobi, Justice John Mativo quashed a ruling by the Public Procurement Administrative Review Board delivered on February the 2nd that sought to grant a tender for the provision of group life cover and last expense for the government officers to UAP insurance even after the same tender had already been won and awarded jointly to two other bidders, Britam Insurance and Pioneer Assurance. Justice John Mativo found it in bad faith that the board would admit a letter and treat it as a request for review, and yet a previous contract had already been signed with a different company. Premium had been paid and some claims already processed. The learned judge noted that the board acted unfairly and in excess of its power in that it encroached into the mandate of the Tender Evaluation Committee.
Well, to some really, really fishy news now, fish catch in Lake Naivasha has hit an all-time low with the current weather being blamed for the decline in number of species available. Now, demand for the commodity has also dropped significantly, even as fish from China hit the Kenyan market. Stakeholders in the troubled water body now want an urgent meeting convened to discuss the latest occurrence in which they say is the first in about nine years. According to a fishmonger, Gladys Otino, the demand for fish from Lake Naivata and Naivasha has decreased significantly with customers shying away from the commodity. The prevailing cold weather has contributed to the decline in fish stock with the popular tilapia species having dwindled significantly. <laughs> Samaki hapa kwetu imekuwa chache sana asipatikani kwa wingi sababu maji imekuwa excess alafu sasa samaki inajificha chini na kuna barafu mingi sasa samaki hazijesi juu ya maji na chesea chini kwa mchanga so ni chache tu ndio zinachesea juu ya size ndogo ndogo zenye sasa nini nini zinashika Well, on that uh, fishy note right there, we want to proceed on a short commercial break. But when we do come back, the conversation around what exactly are the major outtakes of this week in terms of business still ahead with Ken Geshinga later on here on KTN Business Today. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes.